Hey dude, let me show you my DIY CO2 system. Okay, here's the end result. I keep two yeast and gelatin reactions going simultaneously, feeding into a mid-chamber, which means I can replace either one at any given time because I have two one-way valves protecting a loss of pressure. That pressure builds up and then heads out that line to my diffuser, which I'm showing here. Now, I've based this whole thing off of MJ Aquascaping's YouTube channel, which is amazing and you should definitely watch that. Now, your biggest problem is going to be leaks. Here, you can see a bubble building and then it leaks out. And then you can also see the mid-chamber. If you hold it underwater, you can check for bubbles as well. That's another trick. My secret is to use sienna acrylate on the first layer and then silicone on the outside layer. The super glue is a little more brittle and the silicone helps hold it in place. And I do put a silicone underneath as well. Another trick is to use the smallest drill bit possible uh, when putting in the hole. So it, you have to cut the tube at an angle and yank it through. Here's what it looks like all at the end. Now what I'll do is I'll put silicone along the lining on the inside so I'll never be able to open the bottle again. So those are my modifications. Check MJ's video for more detail. Now let's make some gelatin. So first let's start with three cups of water. Um, two cups are going into the pot and this is what water looks like pouring out. So we're making some super sugary gelatin so our yeast can slowly eat that and fart out CO2 for our fish tank. One of the three cups of water is going into a bowl so our gelatin can slowly dissolve in that. It doesn't dissolve well in warm water. MJ uses sheets of gelatin, I use powder. Either one is fine as long as you don't ask where gelatin comes from. Now I'm using RO water instead of tap, which I wanted to avoid the chlorine, but it might actually be counterproductive. Anyway, um, add three cups of sugar into the pot. Yep, I recorded every scoop. So we're going to be just heating this water up. We're not trying to bring it to a boil. We're heating it just so we're going to be able to dissolve the sugar easier. Now for my favorite part, while the stove is on, you can just kind of poke the clumps and it's oddly satisfying. I haven't checked, but I'm pretty sure Dr. Pepper sponsored this video. In case it wasn't obvious from the initial demo, I'm going to make a two liter bottle and a one liter bottle. I may eventually increase that so I have two two liter bottles. Now I'm just gonna stir it up a little bit and kill the heat. Once we set this gelatin, we don't need to use it right away. We can anger our significant others by storing it in the fridge for as long as we need until our bubbles are ready for a replacement. This whole hobby is about learning patience. Don't melt your plastic bottle, let it cool. I'll fill the one liter bottle around a third and then dump the rest into the two liter. I was able to get about four or five weeks out of this last batch. I'm hoping to get a little bit more, and if I tinker with the formula, I'll send an update. Hey, it's been a month. Your bubble diffuser is not putting out what it used to. Let's activate. A little bit of sugar just to kick things off. When the yeast hits that, it'll start uh, reacting right away. I like to dump all the stuff in first before the water so that way it doesn't all just float on the surface. I'm just so glad my wife knows where to find yeast in the supermarket. Never even tried looking for it. So I'm only starting off one of the bottles uh, right now. I don't 
do both so that way the pressure stays rolling. So if you wanted to kick off the one, one liter bottle, you just cut all of these portions in half. But look, look, I just guessed on where to put that bottle and right in. I just fill it most of the way up. This is why I keep the whole thing inside a basket so I can put my phone down and pull it out. I did some gestures here to like, in case I wanted to voice over stuff, but I don't know what else to say. Those are drops of water on my hand, not a vampire bite. Old bottles just smell like skunky beer. I was expecting much worse. So now I have to screw on the new one, make sure it's super tight, and now you compare the spent bottle versus a fresh bottle. And all this time, my CO2 system has still been running. Bubbles are really faint, but that's why I'm upgrading. I've got a plan underway fixing this algae issue you might be able to see, but uh, that's for another video. Meanwhile, hey dude, thanks for watching.